It's a gathering place, a fun place, a place to relax, and you can do it yourself with a Hydra Pool. If you're handy around the house, a pool like this is within your reach. Now is the time for a Hydra Pool. Inside and out, only the finest goes into a Hydra Pool. Welcome to the Hydra Pool family. We're pleased that you've chosen a Hydra Pool for your home. Now it's time to learn more about your pool. This video will help you understand the installation process. You can refer to the video to help answer some of the do-it-yourself questions that may come up during the pool's installation. So now it's time for Making a Splash by Hydra Pool. Hi, and welcome to Making a Splash by Hydra Pools. I'm Jay Baker. And during the course of this program, we're going to meet a husband and wife team that want to put an in-ground pool in the backyard of their home. The thing is, they want to make it a do-it-yourself project. So we're going to show you how many of the steps required for an in-ground pool system of this type can be done by handy homeowners. Let's meet them. Uh, I'm very practical. I'm an engineer, and I'm always looking at cost and minimizing cost to a project. And I'm more than happy to put some effort into it if it can save me a significant amount of money. And I think uh, doing it with the do-it-yourself aspect of this, this pool, I'm able to save uh, quite a bit. The fact that it comes in a kit doesn't make it different, but um, it simplifies it, makes it seem more doable to us. Well, Mark and Jenny, the two of you look like you're really ready to go to work, are you? We are. Yeah. Great. Now, you've chosen a pool system that's going to be 16 feet wide by 32 feet long, correct? Correct. That's right. Okay. Well, the first thing we need to do is really decide on the location and sort of prep the area. Uh, I noticed you're holding a chainsaw. Tell me about that. You're going to take out some trees? Yeah, we have a few we need to cut down to clear the way. Okay, great. Well, why don't the two of you go get set up for that, and I'll be right there. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at some of the other steps we're going to cover to install this pool system. First, we need to do an initial layout of the pool. Then we excavate the site where the pool will be constructed. Next, we assemble the wall panels and the steps. Then we form the hopper and main drain area, pour concrete in the hopper area and the footer around the base of the wall system. We install much of the pool's plumbing. Then we finish grading the bottom of the pool and apply the sand cement mixture that will give us the smooth shape we want for the pool. We install the pool liner and begin filling it with water. While the pool is filling with water, we backfill behind the wall system. Finally, we finish installing the pool's filter system and get ready to swim. There are a number of tools that you will need during the installation process. The list includes an adjustable wrench, large channel lock type pliers, various screwdrivers, a socket set, 25 and 50 foot tape measures, a utility knife, extension cords, string line, a half inch drill and bits, shovels both flat and round, trowels both magnesium and finish types, a carpenter square and level, a two and three quarter inch hole saw, a hacksaw, a broom, a tamper, a sledgehammer, hose, duct tape, a laser level with transit rod and detector, a rake, a pickaxe and marking spray paint. When selecting the site for the pool, make sure its location meets all local rules and regulations. It's also important to make sure that a minimum 10-foot wide opening is available for access to the pool site by large equipment and trucks. Level ground is preferred but not required as a location for the pool. Water drainage away from all sides of the pool is necessary. The pool site should be in a sunny area and we try to position the long wall with the skimmer facing the prevailing winds. Well, folks, the trees are gone, the stumps are gone, and uh, obviously for the three of us to try to do every step of this by ourselves would be an enormous undertaking. So we've got some friends that have helped us out. But let me explain what's going on here in your yard. These lines and these stakes are actually the perimeter of your pool. Now, this interior perimeter, which is marked by these stakes, that's actually going to be the, the blueprint of your swimming pool. And then these orange lines out here with the other stakes, that's uh, going to allow for the overdig. What's an overdig? Well, that's a good question, and, and basically it just means you make the hole bigger than you need it. Okay. Uh, we have two feet all the way around where our actual pool is going to go so that we can get in there and work, have plenty of room to do what we need to do, and then we'll fill that back in later. Okay. So now it's time to tear up your yard. Are you ready? We're let's ready. do it. All right, let's okay. get out of the way. All right. Yeah. 
For our project, we have the crew to help us excavate the pool. While some of us can handle this aspect of the project, it can be daunting for most homeowners. So it can be a wise move to seek out the services of a professional excavating company. There are three separate stages to the excavation of the pool site. The panel shelf, the shallow end with entry steps, and the deep end. Well, as you can see, we've taken out all the topsoil and we've excavated the first level of our swimming pool. Now, this is called the panel shelf level. It's very important because it's where we're going to take our wall sections, assemble them together. We're also going to make sure they're level right here. The panel shelf must be 42 inches below the top of the pool. We have to make sure we don't dig too deep. The panels need undisturbed ground to support them. Also, we have to make sure the panel shelf is level all the way around the excavation. The shallow end also needs to be 42 inches deep. This is the finished grade depth, so the rough depth should be 2 to 3 inches below that level. Again, we have to be sure we don't over-excavate. Well, Mark, Jenny, what do you think? It's looking great. It is. Yeah. Now that the hole is dug, you can really see how it's going to fit in with the rest of the yard. Well, you can also see how much space it's going to take up. <laughs> That's right? true. Do you know what this is? Looks like a reinforcement panel. It is one of your wall panels, and I wanted to turn it around and show you how it's made. It's a thermoplastic material. It's non-corrosive, has a lifetime warranty, and you can see it's really well made. Let yes. me show you how this fits in. Okay. It sits around in the corner. What about the overdig? Ah, yes, the two-foot overdig. So we bring it out to here. Very good. You've been listening in class. Yes. Now, this is 42 inches high, and then we're going to put a two-and-a-half-inch coping piece, which will also run all the way around the pool. Okay. okay. All right? Uh -huh. Now. This is the panel shelf. We have some more digging to do on the deep end, and we also have to dig out a little bit for our stairway. So that's next, okay? All right. All right, All right. let's get busy. In addition to the four-foot radius corner panels we are using in this pool installation, there are several other types of corners that can be found in our various pool designs. They include two-foot and six-inch radius corners, 45-degree corners, reverse radius corners, and even custom angles if required by your pool design. With the shallow end and panel shelf level completed, we make more measurements to determine the actual location of the pool. We set new pins in each corner, run string lines, and use marker paint to highlight the pool's perimeter. This also gives us a better look at the panel shelf area. We mark the pool's break point and the deep end before we begin more excavation. We begin the deep end excavation at what will be the deepest part of the pool. We are careful to not intrude on the deep end's panel shelf area and are also mindful of the deep end corners. After we reach the approximate deep end depth, we can begin creating the slope up to the shallow end. Once the rough excavation work is completed, we finish off the job with more subtle grading. Well, our hole is dug, and I can tell you from down here, it looks a lot deeper than eight feet. But remember, this is just the rough excavation. We'll have some work to do with hand tools around the sides. But our wall panels are next. We'll get to those when we come back. We're at the home of Mark and Jenny Wendell, where we're in the middle of the installation of their new in-ground pool system. So far, we've selected and cleared the site laid out the size of the pool, learned about the different parts of the excavation, dug the hole, and made sure that the panel shelf is level. Before we assemble the wall panels, we'll do some pre-assembly. Well, Jenny, in years past, installing the components on a pool, like the skimmer and the lights, could be very difficult because you had to measure, you had to cut, you had to pre-drill. All of that's been thought out with this system. Okay. All we have to do is set them in place. We've got plenty of room to work up here, so let's go ahead and do it, okay? Right. Hand me that. That's the skimmer. And I'll hold that into place, and you just drive the screws. Make sure you're lined up back here. Okay, you look good. Let's do one on the other side. Right there. The skimmer is the place where most of the floating debris, like leaves, will be trapped and removed. 
It needs to be located on the long wall of the pool just past the point where the bottom of the pool begins to drop off into the deep end. That's called the break point. It's also good to locate it on a side where prevailing wind will help push leaves the right direction. We follow a similar procedure for installing the underwater lighting package. Well, guys, it's time to assemble your wall. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. It's actually very simple. There's three elements to each seam. You've got a right side, a left side, and then there's a brace that's going to go back behind. Now, what you're holding there is the fastener. You've got two washers. All you have to make sure of is there's a washer on each side. Okay. You tighten it down with this uh, wing nut, and once we have them all hand-tightened, we'll go back around and make our final tweaking, okay? All right. All right. Now, let me show you these braces. Hydropools has thought of everything. First of all, they come in pairs, which have to be separated out. But once they're separated out, let me show you what you've got. You've got everything you need right here. And the best thing to do is to try to keep them together as much as possible. If you're ever putting something together and all of a sudden you can't oh, yeah. find sure. where did that nut go or where did that bolt go, everything's right here, okay? Right, right. Once this sets into place and fastens into the wall, then we take off this stake, it fits down in this slot, and then the two pins to drive it into place and hold it are right there. They go right in those holes, okay? Cool. okay. So you keep all this together until you're absolutely ready to use it and you never have to look for anything. Sounds okay? good. Okay? Wonderful. Want to put it together? Yeah. All right, in. here you go. Just to one side. Okay. There you are. We can align it. Yep. I'll even. watch the edge here. Okay. See, I think that one on your left has to come up. There we go. How's that look? That's good. That's good. good. Let me get the first one. Yes. Do that. Okay, got it started. That's good enough. And we got to come forward with the bottom. No. Coming to you. A little more. That's there. good. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. What do you think, Jenny? Not too bad, right? Easy. <laughs> kind of like putting together a toy. I can handle it. A great big toy. With the pre-assembly work completed, we begin placing the wall panels into position. The panels are assembled along the string lines that we laid out earlier. As the panels are installed, we check the level of each one and make minor grading adjustments where it's necessary. With the wall panels in place, we install the aluminum coping. The coping is the topmost part of the pool, and it's where the pool liner will attach. Using the self-tapping screws provided, we secure the coping to the wall panels starting at the ends of each piece of coping and every eight inches along the length of the coping. When installing the straight coping, we need to be sure the coping joints do not line up with any of the panel joints except at the junction of straight and pre-shaped coping. When we have completed the coping installation, we snap the coping clips over all of the coping joints. The final part of the wall panel puzzle is the step. We follow the manufacturer's recommendation on support for the step. With the panel and step clamped tightly together, we drill holes through the panel holes into the step flange. Use the same mounting hardware as the rest of the wall panels to secure the panels and braces to the step. In this pool installation, we're using a side-mounted step that requires very little excavation beyond the overdig. Many pool layouts place the steps at the end or the center of the pool. Additional excavation may be necessary depending on the location of your pool steps. Okay, that wasn't so bad, was it? No. Not at all. Huh? Now, we're standing down here in the deep end of the pool, and this is actually in pool talk called the hopper, but it really gives you an idea of the scale of this thing, doesn't it? It's yes. really big. It is big. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Well, now that the walls are in place, the next important step is that we align them and level them. You want to do that? We're ready. Okay, watch the level line. There you go. To check the alignment of the wall panels, we'll need to check the diagonal measurements across the pool at both the top and bottom of the panels and verify that they are the same. Level all panels so that the top of the panel is level with the benchmark set at the start of construction. Then we check all panels for vertical alignment using a carpenter's level on the face of the panel. We check all straight walls for horizontal alignment. To do this, we stretch a string the entire length of each straight wall at the bottom of the panel ensuring that each panel lines up with the string.
now. It should be good. They lined up? All right, let's try the pins. All right. A little hammer. Your foot against. That's it. There you go. Sorry. Right. Right. Okay, Jenny, the walls are aligned, they're all level, now all we need to do is drive some rebar in around the bottoms of the wall. What that does is where you're standing is going to be filled with concrete, so that's going to be okay. quite a bit of weight. The rebar helps hold the wall in place, but keep in mind as you drive it in, you want about four inches to be exposed above it. That way when we pour the concrete in, it forms around the top of that rebar and really gives you a nice tight bond, okay? Okay. So there's a pre-drilled hold, you got a two-foot section of rebar there, just drive it in. That. That's good. She got it. All right. Now, you see what I mean? Once the concrete is all in this area, it'll actually get around that, that top that you left up on the rebar. Okay. Hold everything into place so these walls aren't going anywhere, all right? Right. It's Sounds time to good. pour concrete. It's going to get a little messy. You ready? All right. We're ready. ready. Okay. Let's do this. When we come back, we'll dive into our pool's plumbing system, pour some concrete, and we'll shape these floors. Stick around. Making a splash. We'll be right back. We're making great progress on the installation of our in-ground pool here at the home of Mark and Jenny Wendell. But they wanted to make this a do-it-yourself project, and as we go along, they're learning that they actually can do much of the work themselves. We need to locate the hopper and main drain in the deep end of the pool. We refer to the hopper location in the dig dimension drawing and begin by stretching parallel strings from the break point to the end wall. This will give us the sides of the hopper. Then we locate the front and back of the hopper pad by stretching strings between the sidewalls of the pool. We find the finish grade of the hopper by using our laser level or by dropping a plumb bob at the intersection of the strings to the proper depth. We drive a stake into each corner of the hopper and run a string between the stakes to indicate the exact position and finish grade. Now this form around me is built out of 1x4 lumber and its uh, dimensions are 6x8. The reason we put this form here is to hold the main drain into place. Once we have the form built, we run a string right across the center of it. That helps us to center our main drain and then you've got a line that will go out to the filtration system that runs up and underneath the wall. Once we get all this set, we're ready to fill this area with concrete, holds the drain in place, and then we can start putting concrete around the edges. The main drain form will be filled with concrete when the wall system footer is poured. This will give the bottom of the pool a smooth, durable surface for the liner to sit on. We'll leave the main drain face plate and gaskets off until the liner is installed. Now there are several ways to put concrete in a hole. Obviously the most labor intensive is to take a wheelbarrow, pour the concrete in, mix it there and pour it in in small increments. But that would be a lot of work on a project like this. Also if you have room you can just back the concrete truck in, have him pour it into the hole and then spread it out as need be. But we didn't want to mess up the landscaping so we've come up with a third solution that will solve both those problems. So to solve the problem of messing up the landscaping and getting plenty of material where we need it, we brought in a concrete truck which we're going to leave on the street all of the concrete gets dumped into a pump. You turn the pump on and it runs down this hose into the pool area. You get the material where you want it in the right amount. It's just like using a garden hose and you can keep moving along. It's great for working in tight spaces and when they leave, you can't even tell that they've been here. The concrete used for the footers should be rated at 3,000 pounds per square inch. You should check your local building code to make sure you are in compliance. The concrete should be poured a minimum of six inches thick with a slight slope away from the panel for drainage and the width of the overdig. The concrete is poured slowly to prevent forcing the walls out of alignment. After the concrete is in place, we recheck all panels for proper alignment using a string line. When pouring concrete under the step, we make sure the concrete touches the underside of the first tread for proper support.
There you go. That's good. Okay. Now, Jenny, you're probably wondering why I just had you cut a three-inch hole in the side of your swimming pool, right? Right. Well, this is going to be for the return, and the returns are going to be along this wall, but basically there's two areas where the water's going to leave the pool, the main drain and the skimmer, okay? That takes care of the deep end and uh, the surface. It's going to go through the pump, it's going to go through the filtration system, and then it has to return to the swimming pool, and that's what we're installing now. Okay. Okay? So you piece, right. I'll feed this, and just screw it on there. Great. Now we'll just attach our plumbing to this. We're ready to go. All right. The water return fittings can be located on any wall as long as they produce a circular flow pattern on the surface of the water that will help push debris toward the skimmer. After installing the fitting, we leave the fitting face plate off until the pool liner has been installed and the water is at least 12 inches deep in the shallow end of the pool. Well, now it's time to get down and start working on the floor of your actual pool, okay? Good. And we can see by the plans, we've got our rough grading two inches below the finished level. Now, the way we're going to make up that two inches is with a sand and cement mixture, okay? okay. We're going to mix the two together and put them in. And really, the best way to make sure that you've got your levels right, we're going to go in there and we're going to run a bunch of strings, make sure that we're two inches above the rough grade, okay. and then when we put our sand in, we'll go right to that string, smooth it out, we'll put in the vinyl. You're getting closer to having a pool. Are you happy? Yes. Yeah. yes. Good. All right. Here's some string. All right. Let's go to work. Thank you. To mark the finish grade for the hopper walls, we run strings from the bottom of the wall panels down to the finish grade height of the hopper. For the shallow end, we measure down from the top of the wall panels to the pool bottom and place a marker. We string a level line between the markers to indicate the finish grade of the bottom. When the strings have been run, we can make the adjustments we need to the rough graded surface. This work is mostly done with hand tools. Remember, there needs to be at least two inches of space between the rough grading and the finish level. We need to make sure we remove any stones or rocks from the finish graded surface and that the surface is properly tamped. With the finish grading completed, it's time to place the sand and cement mixture that will act as the base for the vinyl pool liner. Well, we've got the mixture in there, you turn it on, it mixes it up, you dump it into the wheelbarrow. Okay. It's pretty simple. Good. All right, folks, now we're ready to start making what's going to be our finished grade. That's right before we put the vinyl in place. And the easy way to keep up with it is you want five parts of sand to one part of cement, okay? Okay. So this will hold about three runs of that in our mini mixer here. So 15 shovels of sand to three shovels of cement. We turn it on and mix it up, okay? okay. Right. Then we're going to dump it over into the wheelbarrow, take it to the pool. Once we have it in the pool, we'll use some hand tools to smooth it out because this is the last chance you get to get a nice, smooth surface before we put the liner in place. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Let's go. It's going to be some shoveling. Okay. Right. Ready. We won't have to add any water to the sand and cement mix. It will draw moisture in from the ground beneath it that will eventually cause it to harden up nicely. Okay, Jenny. Now that we have our sand cement mixture in place, it's time to smooth it out because this is going to be the last step before we put the liner in. So it's very important that it be smooth, okay? Okay. This is our finished grade line right here, which is uh, two inches above the rough grade. So we're going to go to that line, all right? right. And it's right. just like icing a cake, except you have two tools. Okay. The first is a magnesium float, okay? That's just for getting the material into position to smooth out. When you go to smoothing it out, we're going to use this. This is called a pool trowel. And there are a lot of different trowels on the market, but you'll notice this is rounded on the edges. Okay. That's so that those corners don't dig into this mixture as we're sure. trying to move it around. Sure. So the idea is to keep it as smooth as possible. And another little trick, when you're out there working, rather than put a handprint down in it that you have to fix later, you can use this magnesium float to actually lean on and then bring the mixture towards you and smooth it out. All right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay. To save us some effort when we add more of the sand cement mixture, we can dump it near the area to be troweled. A certain amount will roll down, but the part of the load that doesn't make it to the proper place will be easy to rake down. Remember that the smoothness and evenness of the bottom will determine the appearance of the liner when it's placed in the pool. We're getting closer to filling our pool. When we come back, we'll install the liner and we'll start the filling process. We also have some trim work to do around the stairs, the skimmer, and the lights. There's much more to come, so stay with us. 
Mark, Jenny, today's the day you've been waiting for. All right. This is your pool liner, okay. and it's a vinyl pool liner, so it was a really good idea to keep it inside because it's a soft material, so obviously the warmer you can keep it, the easier it is to work with. Okay. But the steps that we're going to do now, we're going to need a little help because it's heavy. We're going to spread this out over the pool, lower it down into the pool. We'll actually take the air out from underneath it to get a nice suction all the way around, make it good and tight, okay. and then uh, we're going to fill it up with water. All right. All right. We've got a few steps first, but let's get this over there, all right? Okay. Let's do it. Before we install the pool liner, there are a few things we need to do. We need to be sure the pool bottom is free of any stones, sticks, and footprints. We need to make sure the liner track and the sidewalls are free of any dirt or abrasive materials. And we use duct tape to seal all the wall panel joints and seams to aid in the vacuum process. Okay, it's time to put your liner in your pool. Great. I know, I know. And once again, the folks at Hydropool have thought of everything. They even tell you how to set the box down and where to set the box down. It says, place at the deep end, arrow facing pool. We're at the deep end, the arrow's facing the pool. Our next step is we've put a board here, sort of a platform to help us to give a surface as we unroll it. Right. And then we just pull it across the pool. So let's you and I get it into position. Easy. All right. Okay. Once the liner has been carefully placed on the pool bottom, we can begin the task of snapping the liner bead into the liner track. After the liner bead is completely installed in the liner track, adjust the liner in the pool corners as required to achieve a smooth, loose fit in the corners. Then we turn on the vacuum. All right, that's good. So you can see that I've sealed off the top of the skimmer here, right? right? We've run our hose through the skimmer and our access point is through the opening of the skimmer down underneath the vinyl. What we're going to do is turn on this vacuum and suck all the air out from below the vinyl, okay? Sounds this good. part's really difficult, but that red button right there starts everything. <laughs> okay. Now wait. As the suction starts to pull the liner down, we continually adjust the fit by pulling the excess material on the floor toward the base of the pool walls. If we can't get all the wrinkles out, we shut off the vacuum, reposition the liner in the pool, turn the vacuum back on, and start the process all over again. When the liner is pulled down snugly with no wrinkles, we're ready to finish installing the main drain. By feel, we locate the screw holes in the top of the main drain under the liner. With the gasket in place, we screw the face plate to the main drain following the manufacturer's instructions. Carefully, we use a razor knife to cut the liner material inside the main drain frame and install the main drain cover. We begin filling the pool with a low pressure water source like a garden hose. Once there is six inches of water in the hopper, that's the lowest part of the pool, the remainder of the pool can be filled using a higher pressure source of water from a water truck or hydrant. Remember, it's very important to not let any strong stream of water directly hit the pool bottom. Anytime you exert pressure on one side of a wall, it's important to try to equalize that pressure on the other side of the wall, and the same is true of our swimming pool. As the water level starts to rise, we need to backfill all the way around the exterior of the swimming pool just to try to keep equal pressure on both sides. Now, when we go to backfill this area, we're going to come all the way up to the top of this K-brace, so that's going to be a lot of dirt that we're going to bring into this area. Obviously, if you have a piece of machinery like we do, it's a lot faster, it's a lot easier, but it can be done the old-fashioned way with a wheelbarrow and shovel. When the water level is about two feet above the wall panel bottom, we attach the skimmer, returns, and the pool light face plates with their gaskets to the already installed wall fittings. Using a sharp knife, we remove the vinyl lining that is within the returns and skimmer. And in the case of the light fixture, we follow the manufacturer's installation instructions for completion. Another task to complete when the water level reaches six inches in the shallow end is to finish the step installation. We install the step gaskets and face plates using stainless steel screws and, following the manufacturer's instructions, carefully use a razor knife to cut out the liner material inside the step face plates. Mark, Jenny, we're awfully close to having your hydro pool system finished. Great. Uh, however, it's just a pond in the backyard until you actually hook up the mechanics that make it a swimming pool, recycle the water, and filter it. And it all starts with having proper power. We had a pro come in and install a new box to make sure that everything's got plenty of power. Right. How does this system work? Well, it's actually very simple. 
The pump is what pulls the water out of the pool, both from the skimmer on top and the main drain on bottom. Okay. Pumps it out, brings it through a filter, and then it comes back out through a chlorinator, runs back out to the pools through the lines that we've already installed. What kind of filter does it have? It's a sand filter. And the easy way to keep up with this, the sand does have to be changed, but it's 300 pounds of sand, and you should change it every three years. I mean, over time, it fills up with suntan lotion and debris and things like that, so it's just a good idea to clean it out. It's actually very simple. This comes off, you just dig it out, put in new sand after you wash it out, make sure it's clean, seal it back up, you're ready to go again. Okay. Okay. Sounds pretty you guys good. ready to hook this up? Now, I've noticed that you've already done some, uh, some yeah. work on the pipes here, so you ready right. to just continue it all into this? Yes. All right, let's do, do it. it. Let's do okay. it. We finish installing the pump and filter system along with remaining plumbing. For this project, we're using standard PVC piping. However, some installations may use flexible hose instead. We test the system before continuing to fill the pool with water and then bring the Hydra Pools project to completion. Having been through that process with the step-by-step -step and been involved in each step of the process, I feel like I understand the structure of the pool a lot better and I have a higher level of confidence in the structural integrity of the pool, um, just how it all is pieced together. I think it's even more satisfying knowing that we did part of the work ourselves and um, that we invested some of our own sweat in the process. Your pool is perfectly installed. Every nut and bolt is in place. What did you think? Did you have a good time? It was great. We had good. fun. We very much enjoyed it. Thank you. That's great. I hope you and your family enjoy this for years to come. We will. We thank will. you. No, thank you. It was my pleasure. For Making a Splash by Hydra Pools, I'm Jay Baker. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit our website at www.hydropools.com or call us toll-free at 800-894-4876. Remember, inside and out, only the finest goes into a hydropool.